All right, in this video, we're going to look at finding the formula for a vector field. Uh, we're asked to find the formula for a vector field f, uh, first component function m as a function of x and y, second component n as a function of x and y. Given the fact that for all points, uh, f points towards the origin, um, and the magnitude of f is 10 over x squared plus y squared, uh, and sketch the results. Uh, in step one, it says to substitute the magnitude for the general field into the specific magnitude equation. So given that m and n are the first and second components of the vector field respectively, um, then the magnitude of the vector field is the square root of m squared plus n squared. Uh, and then for our example, that's supposed to be equal to 10 over x squared plus y squared. Now, step two, it says to rewrite that equation to get possible formulas for the component functions. So the idea here is that we want to try to relate m and n to separate uh, terms in an expression. So we could get separate equations for m and n uh, as functions of x and y. Um, and since they're both mentioned here, uh, kind of combined, uh, we want to try to separate this into a part for m and a part for n. Uh, the first step in doing that would be to square both sides and get rid of that square root, because that's really preventing us from separating things. So if you square both sides, then the square root on the left goes away, and you just get m squared plus n squared. And on the right, you get 100, which is 10 squared, and then x squared plus y squared squared. Now I want to split that fraction on the right up so that I have a part for m and a part for n, um, but as it stands, it just has the 100 there. Um, and so the next trick will be to multiply the top and bottom by x squared plus y squared. And what that'll do is give us 100x squared plus 100y squared. And then the denominator will be x squared plus y squared cubed. Now we're able to separate that fraction on the right, that rational expression, into two terms. Now the denominators are the same. It's the numerators that are different. And that'll help us kind of figure out which one goes with m and which one goes with n. Um, sometimes you can just just identify exactly what m and n are there, but here we need to use information about the direction. Uh, we're told that f points towards the origin, um, and as you get more comfortable with these vector fields, um, you'll remember the basic format for uh, a radial vector field where things point toward or away from the origin versus a rotational vector field where things kind of rotate around in a circle. For the rotational field, you're going to want uh, the first component matching up with y and the second with x. Um, and then for the radial fields, you want first component with x, second component with y. Um, and then positives and negatives will determine whether it's for rotational, clockwise or counterclockwise uh, vector field. And then for the radial, whether it's towards the origin or away. Um, but since it's radial, right, um, toward the origin, uh, we do want to match up m with x. And we do want to match up n with y. So that will give us m squared equals 100x squared over x squared plus y squared cubed. And n squared equals 100y squared. So this this assignment here of m with x and n with y uh, already gives us a radial flow. Now to make it toward the origin, uh, when we take the square root, which is what we do next to solve for m and n, we wanna take the negative square root, right? You have a choice of positive or negative here. Um, positive would be away from the origin and negative would be towards the origin. So the final expression for m is negative 10x, right? Square root of 100 is 10, square root of x squared is x. And then this denominator, um, you interpret the square root as a 1 half exponent, and so this exponent goes to 3 halves. Similarly here, we get negative 10y. 
And we have our formulas for M and N, which means we have the formula for the vector field F. All right, so uh, we have the vector field formula. We want to use the learn the sketching process. Um, we'll also see how to uh, plot these uh, computationally, uh, and then we'll validate the results. So for producing a sketch of these, we really need to evaluate this vector function, vector field function, um, at some points, um, and we'll set up sort of a table to keep those points organized. The value of the vector function at any given point is a vector, sort of a constant vector. And the first component is given by M, and the second component is given by N. So uh, I've got some possible values. These should work for most of the problems where you're trying to get a sketch of this is kind of points along the unit square. Um, if these don't work, you can adjust it to be at some different points, um, but these are good starting values. And we're not going to calculate or show the calculation for all these. We'll just show it for a couple, and then you should get the idea from that. Let's start with this point right here, um, and that's when x is 0 and y is 1. And so what we'll do is we'll evaluate the two component functions at those points, and that will give us our vector at that point. So evaluating m when x is 0 and y is 1. get negative 10 times x, which is negative 10 times 0, uh, over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves, which is 0 squared plus 1 squared to the 3 halves. And so this is just 0. And then putting in uh, the same coordinates for n, the only difference is the numerator here, where it's now negative 10y. So the denominator is still 1. Uh, and we get negative 10. So you get a vector here, uh, first component 0, second component negative 10. Um, so you can do the same thing for um, these other sort of cardinal directions. Get these without a whole lot of extra work. Uh, and then you put in x and y both being 0, uh, the denominator is 0 in both functions, and so that does not exist. All right, let's now do the one of the corner values, because those are a little different, though you are just evaluating functions of two variables. So this is all just kind of chapter 4 stuff, right? Um, let's take a look at this one. So that's when x is positive 1 and y is negative 1. So again, go to these component functions and replace x with 1 and y with negative 1. So that denominator ends up being different now. Uh, you get 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, and 2 to the 3 halves is square root of 8. And so you get negative 10 over root 8. The denominator is the same for n, but the numerator is now negative 10 times negative 1. So we get a positive 10 over root 8. Oops, it's a ugly 8 there. OK. So we get negative 10 over square root of 8, and then 10 over square root of 8. All right, you can do uh, similar calculations to get these other four corners. They're all going to be 10 over root 8. It's just a matter of whether they're positive or negative. And you can definitely you know, use a, a basic calculator to get a lot of this done more efficiently. Now, it's often the case that we want a unit vector field where we're focusing just on the direction of these vectors, and so we make all their magnitudes 1. Um, to do that, um, that's also helpful for the sketching process. 
Um, so we want to fill out the same table for the corresponding unit vector field. And what you do is you just take all these vectors we found and find their corresponding unit vectors. And you recall that unit vector is just uh, that vector uh, dividing each component by its magnitude. So let's take a look at that and we'll again pick the top middle one there, zero, negative 10. So if that's our vector, then the magnitude of that vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components, which is just 10. And then dividing each component uh, by 10, we get the unit vector. So 0 over 10 is 0, and negative 10 over 10 is negative 1. So all the 10s are going to go to 1s in these vectors, right? And if a vector does not exist, then its unit vector also does not exist. Uh, let's take a look at that calculation for that corner, bottom right corner that we looked at earlier. So the magnitude of V here, still the square root of the sum of the squares. Uh, so 10 squared is 100, and square root of 8 squared is 8. Uh, 100 over 8 plus 100 over 8 is 200 over 8. And uh, 200 divided by 8 is 25, and square root of 25 is 5. So the magnitude of those vectors, corner vectors, are all going to be 5. Um, and the corresponding unit vector, you would divide each component by 5, they all have a 10 in the numerator. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Uh, and so you'd get 2 over square root of 8. Square root of 8 is 2 root 2. 2 is cancel, and you just get 1 over root 2. So all the 10 over square root of 8s turn into a 1 over root 2, and the sign should stay the same. Right, Going to a unit vector doesn't change whether the components are positive or negative because that's related to their direction. All right. So you could use either one of these tables to get the vector field. I mean, you might have a homework problem where they just say find the unit vector field uh, values or find the vector field values. I wanted to show both. Uh, when we go to a sketch, uh, a hand-drawn sketch, it's usually easier to, to not worry so much about the magnitude of the vectors, though you could break out a ruler and, and make that accurate as well. I'm going to be using the unit vector field, the results from step five, to do my sketch. Because, you know, trying to draw a vector that's 10, length of 10, um, it, it would be too big for what I have available in this little graph here. So let's get rid of this stuff and go to the sketch. And, and then we'll show how to do this with technology as well. So remember that you know this vector here corresponds to the value of the vector field at the point 0, 1. So that's the point right here. Uh, that should really be kind of the center of the vector, I think. Um, some computer programs, some people will draw that as like the head or the tail of the vector. Um, I think it's best for, for that to be right in the middle of the vector. Um, and in this graph, I believe it's uh, one unit is one, two, three, four, five squares. So these would have to go like two and a half, like that, to be a unit vector. 
Again, the magnitude is not that big of a deal, but try to make it as close to unit vectors as you can. Um, similarly, this one here, this is when x is 1, y is 1. So that's this point right here. Um, since they're both negative, it should be going down and to the left. And so, you know, using a, a ruler to do this is not a bad idea. I'm kind of precluded from that based on the technology setup that I have. Um, all right, and then moving around, you know, clockwise, uh, then I get to uh, 1, 0, and then the vector is negative 1, 0, so that's just pointing to the left. Uh, and then uh, bottom right of the table is that's minus 0, this is 1, negative 1, so that's right here. Uh, first component negative, so going left, second component positive going up. Wow, this is it's really bad. Uh, I'm trying to do this freehand to simulate. I know I have a tool there where I could make a perfectly straight line, but I'm trying to simulate what you would do hand drawing this. All right, and then bottom, middle, I should go up like that. And then bottom left. There we go. Uh, and then middle left. And then top left. All right, and that's our sketch again. We don't have a vector at the origin, um, so we don't draw one there. So that sketches the vector field, the unit vector field from step five. Uh, we now completed the you know, process that we were asked, but we want to validate. Um, and it says validate by checking the criteria for the field. So, you know, go back to what you asked in the original statement of the problem. Um, it said something about the magnitude and something about the direction. Um, and uh, it said find a vector field uh, that points toward the origin. So for the... Um, or the direction, you can often use the results from step six to validate. The vector field points toward the origin. I mean, you're, you're validating when you do that graph, right? You can see that it's all the vectors are pointing towards the origin. Uh, the magnitude is not a part of that, right? Because that's the unit vector field. So for the magnitude, we kind of need to go back to the formulas, right, which are here, and make sure that those match up with our magnitude um, condition. Uh, and so this, this work here should be done in step seven. I just kind of trying to conserve space and keep everything in view. Um, the magnitude is supposed to be 10 over x squared plus y squared. So what we'll do is we'll show that with those components, right? So let's put M in there. And then put N in there. And when we square those, negative uh, 10 squared is 100. X squared is X squared. Uh, negative 10 squared is 100, y squared is y squared. And then you square the denominator, that exponent of 3 halves gets multiplied by 2 and becomes a 3. And then you're able to uh, combine the two fractions and factor the 100. And then you're able to simplify uh, by canceling out a factor of x squared plus y squared on the top and bottom. So the, the, the x squared plus y squared in the numerator goes away, 
And in the denominator, the uh, exponent drops to squared. And at this point, you can take the square root and get 10 over x squared plus y squared. Uh, and that was the original given requirement that the magnitude matched up with that. So that feels a little bit like just working backwards through what we did in steps one and two, but, but that's fine. Um, that does validate the magnitude part of it. All right, uh, before we go, let's take a quick look at doing this with technology. And uh, for that, we will um, show some Python code here. Um, so in Python, uh, we're using some matplotlib to create the graphs. So create a, a new figure. It's a little bigger. Uh, with fig equals plot.figure. Um, and then this uh, mesh grid thing, this sort of creates the, uh, the set of points that you'll use. Now, if you want that to match up with what we just did, uh, we'd probably just go out to two in each direction. Um, and maybe we just want this to be three. Let's, we might have to mess around with these. So the first two numbers are the kind of domain and range. And then the last number is how many points you want along the way. It might need to be four. And then the vector field here, this is M. And then this is N. And so what we do is we put in what we define the vector field to be. So I think we said negative 10 times X. Uh, and then it was X squared plus Y squared to the three halves. And the only difference here was that it was y, right? Mm -hmm. And then we do plot quiver, which draws the arrows uh, along that mesh grid and just change this to M and N. Now that's actually uh, not using a unit vector field. This is actually drawing the magnitudes. Um, and it looks like it's not doing the ones in between. So maybe we do want this to be a little bigger. So let's try six. We might need to make it eight. Hmm, that's not bad. Still doesn't give us one right at that. Maybe we need five. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, so it, it's giving us an error here because it is evaluating at the origin itself, which is where the function's undefined. Um, and so, you know, if you look here, like this is the graph we created. Um, but this is using non-unit vectors. So the vectors uh, that are pointing in the horizontal vertical directions are actually bigger magnitude of 10. The other vectors are magnitude 5. Um, and they're still not to scale, um, but they are kind of scaled relative to each other. Um, so plot quiver will kind of make some adjustments um, to make, you know, the, you could see the, the vertical and horizontal vectors are twice as long as the diagonal ones there. Um, which matches up, but obviously they're not magnitudes 10 and 5 because that graph would just be unreadable. Um, and then, of course, there's ways to make it a unit vector field. Um, you could just find the magnitudes of M and N and then divide by them. Um, but uh, I feel like this is, is pretty cool looking. So um, that's a vector field drawn with Python. Um, and you can do the 3D vector fields of Python too. Um, uh, there's some code for that in lab 6. So. Uh, that's going to do it for this video and finding the formula for a vector field. We'll do a lot more vector fields in this last chapter. Um, and so stay tuned for the next video on uh, line integrals. I'll see you then.